Welcome to ICHE's Take 5. One of our hopes in having these short videos is to equip homeschoolers, uh, not just to teach their kids, but also how to respond to questions about homeschooling. Uh, one of the questions that we hear most often is, well, why do you homeschool? And I've seen some homeschoolers kind of, their eyes get big and they can tell they're kind of melting. What do I say to that? I think we should be more offensively minded than defensively minded. As a matter of fact, when somebody asks me, why do you homeschool, Kirk? Uh, first of all, I, I believe they're being very sincere. I don't think they have an agenda. They're just wanting to know. But I used to have a little bit of fun with this. I say, well, I'd be more than happy to share with you why we homeschool. But if you don't mind, would you share with me why you public school from a biblical point of view? And then I'll share my reasons. Well, of course, when I ask them to share first, that kind of puts the ball back in their court. And it's usually a pretty short conversation. As a matter of fact, I've only heard one point used consistently when it comes to holy public school, and that is, of course, salt and light, salt and light. Uh, on Colin Gunn's movie Indoctrination, uh, Dr. Franklin Graham says he was not going to be happy until there was one Christian child in every classroom in America. And then he said, let's not surrender our public schools, let's take them back. Now, first of all, I have the utmost respect for Dr. Graham. I think he's a great man. On this particular issue, I just disagree with him. Now, when he said, let's take them back, you know, the crowds all, you know, gave a big ovation because 90% of them send their kids to public school. But in saying that, he made a very subtle presupposition. And that was when he said, let's not surrender our public schools, let's take them back. From Scripture, I don't think we can say they were ours to begin with. Maybe when there was very much a local control back when they started, but definitely not since the 1850s when it, you know, it's been compulsory attendance and the government's taken over. So I would say they're not, they were not ours to begin with. But the, the big argument is salt and light, salt and light. And you hear this often, Kirk, your kids will be salt and light. Send them to school to be salt and light. But statistics say that's not working from a biblical point of view. As a matter of fact, there's different surveys. The very best survey says we lose two-thirds of our kids after the first year in college, and the worst by the Southern Baptist was 88%. So let's send our kids to be an influence into our public schools. And what's happening, we are losing between 66 and 88% of them to the world. Folks, they're not being the influence. They're being influenced. And so, seeing these statistics, I think we have to come up with one or two conclusions. Either A, God's Word does not work in regards to salt and light, or number two, B, uh, we misapplied God's Word. And I think, obviously, we've misapplied God's Word. Uh, there's a real disconnect with salt and light because this verse is never used with that. It says in uh, Mark 9.50, salt is good. It's a good thing to be salt and light. But if the salt has lost its saltiness, how you make it salty again, have salt in yourselves. Folks, I don't think we can reasonably expect a 5-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 15-year-old, maybe not even a 19-year-old, to have enough salt in himself to be salt and light. As a matter of fact, the statistics clearly, clearly prove they don't. And so I homeschool so my kids can be salt and light. You see the difference there? Those first 20 years, I'm putting salt in my kids' lives. I'm teaching them God's Word at home. I'm keeping them from bad company, which corrupts good habits. So that when they're 20, which by the way, in the Jewish culture, that's when young men went out to war, I would suggest to you that our school grounds, our public schools, are uh, spiritual battlegrounds. They were equipped they were ready to fight at that point. So we homeschool to put salt in there. Because what's happening in our public schools with kids who are being raised in Christian homes, they are hearing evolution. They are being uh, uh, constantly assaulted with social engineering. Day after day, week after week, thousands of hours after thousands of hours. And we think... A 30-minute Sunday school lesson is going to combat that? It's not possible, my friends. And the statistics clearly prove that out. So next time you're asked, why do you homeschool? I would encourage you to jump on the, on the uh, offensive there. Say, well, I homeschool because of salt and light. 
I want my kids to be salt and light. Then you, they say, well, what, what? they're not being salt and light. Say, oh, yes, they are. Because these first 20 years, I'm putting salt in there. So the last 60 years, they can be salt and light. Because right now, what most Christians are doing, they're sticking their kids in to be salt. They don't have enough salt in themselves, and they're losing their kids. And Mark 9.50 says, if salt has lost its saltiness, how can it be salted again? Folks, that's a very, very, very strong verse. So I encourage you this day, be offensively minded and homeschool your kids because they can be salt and light.